Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this English 102 quick tip, big idea video. I'm Brian, the host of this little show. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about chapter six and seven, so let's get started. Also, I'm in my backyard. Forgive the sounds of summer. There's a lot of stuff happening back here. Yeah, now let's get started. Okay, so uh, I'm up on chapter six, and uh, you'll, you'll notice in Blackboard under the week three materials that there's plenty of information about all those specific terms that are listed there. But I wanted to get over, uh, I wanted to go over here a couple different things. Some rising levels of things happening in the backyard here. Um, this has to do with point of view. A um, couple different ways that we can divide this out, but the first one has to do with first person point of view, and so that's coming from a very personal perspective from the narrator character. Two things you need to know about this. One in particular, we can understand that uh, the narrator is going to be reliable, and generally speaking, you can take what they have to say, um, not with a grain of salt or anything like that. They're just straight up being honest with you to the extent that they know details. The second one has to do with the unreliable narrator. Now, what's interesting about the unreliable narrator is that in our lives, we've all had experience with this type of person. Now, think back to the type of person that maybe you knew back in the day who could never really tell you the full truth. Now, let me, let me give you an example. So, five years after I graduated from high school, I met up with this guy at a party, and he had told me that in the five years that he had joined the Army, became an Army Ranger, got out of the Army, and then joined the Navy, and then became a Navy SEAL, and now he was out of the Navy and he was joining the FBI. And I remember thinking, I think it takes about five years to do each one of those things. And here we are only five years after we graduated. So I figured the only truth that I really learned from him was that he probably left one of those services. So long story short, um, sometimes when you see a narrator in uh, one of these stories, you should know that they may not be telling you the full truth. So keep that in mind. Now on the chapter seven, so when we think about chapter seven and the idea of character, there are a few things going on. Uh, basically what we're talking about with character uh, has to do with the methods, I'm reading here, the methods that the author uses to paint a picture of the people that we see within the story. And again, in Blackboard, you'll see there's a whole bunch of terms that are laid out that gets into very specific detail about that. But one thing you should know is that authors tend to sort of divide this into two different ways. They either tell us what a character is or they show us what a character is based on the details that they provide within the story. And so the showing can happen in terms of the action of characters, like what they do. We can also see showing happen with dialogue, say people are talking to each other about different things. And so you begin to sort of get little nuggets about how those characters are operating within a story. Now there are other details here that uh, you'll find, things like round and flat and major and minor and protagonist and antagonist, all those kinds of things will be associated uh, with the characters that we're looking at broadly in a story. But uh, you should know anytime there's a main character in a story, we're gonna probably think about that person as a major character who's also the protagonist. We can also think about antagonists as like maybe another person or a force or sets of forces that are aligned up against the protagonist. So yeah, uh, the protagonist isn't always a hero. That person could be an anti-hero and the antagonist sometimes isn't always even a person. So that's good to keep in mind in moving forward. Uh, last but not least, we wanna talk about motivation. So when we think about characters and we're asking the reasons why they do certain things within the story, that has to do with motivation. As I wrote, reasons, motives for behavior. What does the character want or desire? These are things to keep in mind as you move through the story. So for instance, in this particular week, we are looking at a story called Courting a Monk. And so the main character there is Gina, and you kinda gotta wonder what she wants in the end, and it has to do with uh, this idea of desire and some rather PG-13 details that I warned you all about. Um, so pay attention to that. And finally, what we, as we judge characters, we wanna think about their level of consistency. So as I wrote down here, how do they deal with stuff? Highly technical definition there. Uh, to be believable, there must be, quote, consistency between motivations and actions. 
So this video has been about point of view and characterization. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about what you saw in this video or what you see in Blackboard, hit me with an email. I'm Brian and I will see you in the next one. Peace.